In the heart of Manhattan, amidst the din of busy street traffic and the constant hum of a city that never sleeps, a world-renowned chef is found murdered in his own kitchen. The only evidence to this heinous crime? Hey there folks, I am Jeff, your tabletop technician here in the Dice Tower, and this review is going to be just a little different from anything you've ever seen me do here on the channel, and that's not just because the game I'm reviewing today has the longest title I've ever read off on camera, Murder Mystery Party Case Files, Death by Chef's Knife. This, as you can probably assume from that title, is a murder mystery party game where one or more players will be attempting to discover who murdered Chef Lorenzo Ritelli at his esteemed restaurant in New York City. What will make this so difficult to review, though, is that this game only has one ending, which I certainly don't want to spoil. But not only that, there's no actual rules to this game. When you first untie this binder and remove its contents, you're greeted with a single page telling you to solve this murder. It also provides two websites, one to help with tips and another to let you verify your collective answer. It also tells you that you need not limit your knowledge to the contents of this binder. You can seek out other sources of information. And that's it. There's nothing else in this box to provide any guidance. Just a pile of reports, interviews, photos, newspaper clippings, product brochures, business cards, and more. So here's what I will tell you. About a week or so ago, my wife and I had some friends over for dinner, and afterwards, we dumped out the contents of this box onto the kitchen table. I flat out revealed that I had no idea how to play this, that this one little sheet of instructions didn't really give us any idea where to start. And then I kind of just shut up, because at that point, I didn't want to reveal that I had already lost all interest in playing this. I don't know, I guess I'm just a little more of a fan of structure than even I thought myself. However, maybe just 10 minutes later, with these contents already spread further out across the table, we were kind of into it. We were trying to determine the murder weapon. We were torn between a variety of unique suspects, one of which I'm still convinced was none other than Eric Summerer. And we were pouring through pages of witness testimony, blueprints, a birth certificate, even a restaurant napkin. Of course, some of this was utter nonsense, just red herrings, as my one friend put it. But then his wife read something off of a police report, it clicked with something that I had read in an interview, and suddenly we were honing in. We were connecting the dots, and just a few short minutes later, we had caught the bad guy. Of course, we poured ourselves some celebratory beverages, and then stopped to chat about the experience of the game. First off, all of us were really impressed with not just the variety of content in this box, but at the variety of materials on which they were printed. This newspaper clipping is real newspaper. These are glossy photo stock photos, and this is a cloth napkin, and it made it kind of easy for us to recall information and even find things in the pile of documents on this table because we could remember what those materials felt like in our fingers. We could remember the texture. We could remember that, oh, that's right, this was that cardboard menu. Here it is. And I'll say that maybe the mystery itself wasn't that hard to solve. Like I said, one person at the table read off something. It reminded me of something that I had read, and we were sent squarely towards the finish line. I will also say that this type of experience leaves itself wide open to alpha gaming, if that even is the right thing to call it. Again, this is a one or more player game, which means that one player can sit and absorb all this information and pretty much figure out the case on their own. My wife is a bit more soft-spoken, and she even revealed later that she didn't really feel like she had had much opportunity to contribute to the case. You could probably fix this with something like a sand timer or a timer on your phone, kind of giving everyone at the table a chance to share, but it may just not work out in larger groups. I'll also mention that this is not the latest of the Murder Mystery Party Case Files collection. The Dice Tower sent me this to review, but I don't know how long it's been rattling around their studio. This came out in 2021. There's been at least one new title that has come out since then. I'll also say that you can pick up these games from anywhere from about $17 to $27. I can't say that this is a $27 experience, but it is good to note that nothing here has been destroyed. This case is still perfectly solvable to any group of new players, which means that I could turn around and flip this game for maybe about $10, and suddenly we're all getting pretty good bang for our buck. And with that final little caveat, I will recommend this to other gamers. And I might even try to track down some of the other titles in this series. I mean, after all, unlike my little beverage here, I wouldn't want these cases to go cold. Cheers.
two, one. 